Well, the way this got started is uh, a friend of mine, Mike Bird, actually uh, got me in contact with some people from Alfred Media. And they were looking for somebody to basically take the 3D renderings of the church and uh, create a projection map. The way we go about starting the project actually is we get a 3D laser map uh, provided by another company which is converted into uh, CAD format and various other formats. Extruded, uh, we convert that into 3D models and begin to put the pieces of the building together. Brandon Roth with Alfred was actually incredibly helpful in, in getting me the information and the pieces I needed to start putting the map together. I met with him uh, along with Tim from uh, White's Chapel uh, who created actually uh, an incredible uh, music piece uh, to go along with this and I couldn't have asked for, for a better piece of music to animate to. gave me a plot of the church here, as you can see, and just said, you have free reign, just design whatever you want, uh, which is great because I could just come up with different pieces in any way I wanted. I got the music, I added section numbers to it, listened to it over and over, and stood in front of the plot and just imagined what it would look like. Then I started sketching little mini versions of the specific sections on smaller sheets of paper until I kind of had a storyboard developed. After all the pieces were storyboarded, I started working on the various sections. I kind of skipped around depending on what I had time to work on that particular day. I wanted to do a mini projection so you can see the mock-up that I made here. I had all the windows and uh, archways cut out so I could do a little test. My daughter was actually my biggest fan on this project. I think she uh, has watched this probably 300 times or so. Uh, she, she ask for it every day when we come home from the babysitter and uh, now that it's finished she wants to watch it on YouTube all the time. For the beginning section my vision was to have a child holding hands with her parents walking through the snow to kind of go along with the audio track and it didn't work exactly the way we wanted it to just because we have a one and a half year old who uh, doesn't really do what we say and just does whatever she wants. So after about three tries or so, we actually came up with a better solution, which was to have her run toward me in front of a green screen and I pick her up. We then silhouetted that and cut it out, put it on white, and then uh, put that into the window of the church. Then at the beginning, you can see there's some lighting, there's outlines. Uh, there's two different pieces that kind of go together to build this. There's the two-dimensional flat portions things behind windows and in front of windows and arches uh, that are very flat and there are also the 3D elements. There's 3D elements that are created and stuck into the 2D environment and then there are 3D elements such as 3D lights that are actually being projected onto a 3D model of the building. That creates the shadows and the look that there are actually lights physically present at the church uh, rather than just a projection. You can see the lights here are casting shadows and it looks like you've actually got movers sitting on top of the church that are being controlled by some sort of lighting board or something, something you see in a concert environment, but that's all part of the 3D environment. What we're doing here is creating completely customized 3D elements. These aren't a bunch of pieces of media off of some media server website, uh, some stock content website. These are pieces of 3D and 2D media completely custom for this particular building. There are various uh, parts of the church that are uh, further forward or backward and there's other technology behind that in order to make sure that everything fits into place and that's where Brandon comes into play and uh, he did a great job making sure that everything was aligned correctly once I provided him with the source material. One of the things that was actually surprising to me was uh, how much everybody enjoyed the wrapping paper section. That's something that was kind of on a whim. There were various missing pieces uh, in my final timeline that I didn't know what I was going to put there and I kind of saved those for the end. Uh, I ended up coming up with the wrapping paper animation and that seemed to get more oohs and ahs than I actually thought it would. I actually used a method called subsurface scattering in order to create the illusion that light was in front of the building, casting shadows, and then going behind the window. 
when light goes behind objects, sometimes it's, it's rather difficult to, to render uh, accurate shading as far as the lighting and textures of a light behind an object. I created a texture that was kind of like wax in a way that it scatters light so that it would look like the light was going into the building and moving around frosted windows and then coming back out and then creating more shadows on the building in the 3D environment. Now in the section with the fireplace, I wish the windows in the middle could have been a little bit brighter so you could have seen the fire a little bit better. Uh, we did have a lot of problems with the windows and Tim did a great job on the side windows uh, covering all the windows with spray snow in order to get a uh, better bounce back on the light. Now, the middle was stained glass so that would have been difficult to do. Nevertheless it looked great and in the fire scene you can see here that I modeled some stockings, I modeled bulbs, I modeled the tree, I modeled everything in it and then the star goes on there at the end. It's kind of my uh, my, my ode to Super Mario Brothers kind of did a little cartoonish animated star. Now in this section I wanted to kind of break from the Christmassy feel and go with something uh, a little more fun and just kind of break from that for a second. So the music to me sounded like something kind of tropical so I decided to go to this whole tropical scene and uh, model some fish. Uh, all the fish had uh, fins and swam by themselves. I used scripts to uh, basically make fish that moved on their own and then just put them into the scene. Uh, modeled the, the fins in different portions. They're not fully 3D fish, they're kind of fake 3D fish, but that's really all I needed for this particular scene. And uh, added palm trees and water, and then into the waterfall, which was actually a real waterfall that I masked in order to look like it was falling into one part of the building and kind of overflowing to the bottom of the building over the arches. I put a little bit of frost on the glass and uh, added some icicles, modeled a snowman and some snow and made all that build up. And then in this scene there's uh, lots of lights. These are actually uh, lights that I put together on strands so that I could mold them and shape them in any way I wanted. The lights were controlled uh, again with scripts just to make everything easier. Once I had everything into place I was able to just go in and turn the lights on and off with the music as I wanted. And again, these lights were created so they were 3D and cast shadows on the building. I actually used real physics for the balls here in the church. What I did was made rigid body balls with invisible walls around the church for the balls to fall into, uh, kind of like a box. And when the section started, I released the balls. There's real physics, gravity, mass, bounce, everything on the balls so that they kind of hit the pieces of the church. There's an invisible floor that disappears and the balls fall down. And then I took a, another version of the church that was flat and put that onto a piece of cloth so it flies away. Then at the end we went with the simple words. You know, nothing fancy, but it has a, a, a great uh, dramatic effect along with the, the, the words of the music and uh, just kind of wraps everything up. Uh, then we come back to Christmas trees and fireworks at the end and then we went back into loop after that and uh, the uh, graphics artist at the church uh, created some individual elements that would go together in between shows which were, were really nice looking and uh, had the, the times for the shows and everything on it. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in 3D. I got where I'm taking the kids. Yes, That's it's awesome. beautiful. Finally, it's Christmas time in South Lake, Texas, and the White Chapel United Methodist Church has an amazing 3D display. 3D display. I love their burgers. Tim and everybody at the church did such a great job. Such incredible musicians. The track was great. Alfred Media did such a great job with the gear. Uh, Brandon Roth did such a, a great job putting everything together and kind of acting as a go-between between all of us and everybody did such a great job. It turned out great and I'm looking forward to doing it again next year. It's Christmas.